welcome back to Bichao. Now today I am over here in Delhi and a very very special tuner. I would say one of the guys who create some of the most epic and interesting builds in this entire city. Just to give you an idea, I am standing next to a E90 with a LS swap. Let me know down in the comment section below if you want to hear that car roar and if you want me to drive that car and show you what it's capable of. That said though, today, despite the epic car that's besides me, that is not the reason why I am here. I am here today because of two very special yet very sedate looking cars. Both of these are Skoda Superbs, but what they have lurking under their engine or under their bonnet rather is something totally unique. I bet there are not many such cars in the entire country and the reason for that is that both of these cars actually are running engine swaps where both of them have the 2 liter VRS engines. One over here is a VRS 230 while the one over there is a VRS 245. So today I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview on how these cars have been set up, what kind of parts have been used and then we'll take one of these cars out for a spin and see how they drive. But before we go ahead, I want to quickly tell you about this dash cam that I've been using for the past six months. This is the Mio 5 4K dual dash cam, which I have been using to travel across the country for more than 8,000 kilometers. This dash cam has not only saved me so many times from unwanted arguments with unwanted people while constantly monitoring my car, even when I have left it alone in the parking. Indian roads and traffic conditions honestly require you to have a dash cam on you at all times. And what better dash cam to get than the one that records two similar simultaneous streams at the same time, one in 4K and the other one in 2K, one from the front and the back to give you a proper 360 degree coverage. This one also has an inbuilt 128 GB storage so you never have to worry about downloading the footage right away and you can do it later as well. It even has 5G Wi-Fi that ensures that your footage can be downloaded super quickly while having features like shock sensor that automatically starts recording when there's a disturbance while driving or when parked. The footage is recorded in high dynamic range so no matter if it's day or night it is going to be crisp and clear. And it even has built-in GPS to record your location for future reference. But the best part for me about the Mio 5 dash cam is that it has a 24 hour parking monitor which constantly monitors your car and keeps it safe even when you are not looking after it. So head over to the Mio 5 website that's mio5.in or you can even go to amazon.in and get yourself a Mio 5 dash cam and rest assured that you are safe and secure when you're on the roads and off it. Now, while both of these cars might look very similar, there are a few subtle differences and most of those differences boil down to the usage of both the owners. The biggest thing which I would say on the outside, first of all, both of these cars are completely stock from the outside. There's hardly any give that these are actually tuned cars. The only way you can find out that is by these massive upsized rims and a little bit by the amount of gap you have between the wheel and the wheel arch. So the big rims on both these cars are because after the conversion and after the horsepower increment, they definitely need much bigger and more powerful brakes. But apart from that, what you would also notice is that this car is actually sitting quite a lot taller. In fact, this car is sitting taller than the stock ride height of the Superb, while this one is actually a lot lower. The reason behind that is this car is actually sitting on IBAC lowering springs. As you can see, there's hardly any give. I can't even fit two fingers through. While this one, I can actually go three fingers deep. Actually, I can try going with the fourth one as well. Yeah, yeah, a lot of difference. And the reason why both these cars have been set up in such a different way is because of their usage. Now, this car is mostly used in the city. It's been driven on good, proper, normal highway roads or city roads. And that's why he can afford to lower its car. While at the same time, this owner actually travels a lot in rural areas where his business and the rest of the things are. And that is the reason why he actually needs the car to be lifted. So he has enough ground clearance to cover whatever bad undulation on the roads that are there on his journey. That said though, both these cars are running some pretty insane specs. Let me just quickly pop the hood. Popping hood number one. This is the heavy hood. And there we go. Now the major difference between both these cars is that this is an engine swap based on the VRS 230, which means of course, it's got the 232 liter engine along with a DQ 250 transmission. This one is a VRS 245, which means the 245 swap with the two liter engine along with a 
DQ381 transmission is what this car has. This one over here is running a DO88 intercooler. Then it's running a radiator also from DO88. While at the same time, this gorgeous looking carbon fiber intake, which also comes from DO88. It also has this racing line PCV catch can. And as I mentioned before, it's running on some really, really big brakes where these are 357 mm APR big brake kits. Now, the turbo upgrade on both these cars are also kind of similar where this is running a DTR6054 from APR. This one also at the same time is running the 6054 turbo upgrade. In terms of the remaps, both these cars are running the ECO Tech four-way map which is switchable with live tuning patch. The difference here is that this car is running a Wagner intercooler with CSF race radiator. Both these cars are quite similarly set up while there are a few things or parts which are different on both the cars. At the same time, both of them will be producing close to 400 plus horsepower, about 410 or 420 on both of these. The main difference is how these cars are going to ride. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this car out for a spin because this car seems to be a lot more pliant for roads where it has slightly higher ground clearance, which means this will be hopefully a little more comfortable to drive. By the way, interesting thing, today itself, I drove in the morning a setup which was quite similar and that was actually a very, very, very comfortable setup. So I'm hoping and I'm guessing that this is going to be a really comfortable car on the road. So without further ado, let's take this one out for a spin. So driving the flat tire, driving the VRS 245 powered Superb. On the inside, the only difference you can actually make is there's a boost gauge over here okay this is the first superb that i have sat in which has a boost gauge and apart from that i mean pretty normally driving car since it's a little higher than the stock suspension setup because of the b3 and b6 uh, spring and strut combination the damper combination this actually is riding very well it is very balanced when it comes to driving right now over here also we have not the plushest of road quality it's actually a little undulated but the comfort which this car is primarily meant for is still retained i have not pulled this car as of now but the biggest difference that i can make out in driving is that the brakes are a lot more snappier of course you're running such massive rotors that is obviously going to give you a lot more braking which is kind of required when you're running a setup which is 400 plus horsepower the stock superb is about 190 horsepower 1.8 pretty sedate car but this i mean right now also it doesn't feel sedate although i've still not opened it up now i think would be a good time to if we have a little bit of opening in the traffic this is my first pull ever in a super okay foot down <laughs> that's crazy first of all the way it builds boost is insane like 2000, 2500, I still didn't open it up completely. It was just a little teaser, a little sort of understanding. And two, two and a half thousand RPM is where it starts opening. And I could just get a hint of the amount of firepower this thing has underneath. And I had to go on the brakes and the brakes were so, so strong that I actually stopped a lot before I needed to speciality of this car is that since it's a superb it's lugging a lot more weight compared to a vrs oof the brakes are strong it's running a vrs 245 setup but since it's heavier than the vrs it's a little more gradual when it comes to the acceleration of course the boost is still there the power is still there but it's a lot more linear it's a lot more gradual which is kind of nice and it sort of suits the character of this particular car this car does not feel at all what it's capable of till you actually push it you press the foot down i'm at 2000 rpm foot down and there it is <laughs> the surge of power is relentless and those brakes my god my favorite part about this car is that brake it stops on a coin that i was almost about five five and a half thousand rpm just relentlessly keeps pulling till that like 2 2200 2300 rpm is where the turbo starts spooling it starts presenting you its power and by the time you're hitting five five and a half thousand rpm you're whichever gear you are in by the way you have already crossed some speeds which are not very specifically legal 
while at the same time you're still building boost you're still building a insane surge of power what a machine the beauty of this build is the seamlessness in which everything is working together like when you want it to be the superb that you've bought it for the primary purpose of a superb is to drive you around comfortably to be in absolute comfort all of that is still there when you put it in drive it's just like a normal superb you will not feel anything when you're driving it and then the minute you put it in sport it changes its character it becomes a completely different animal like it just keeps pulling it just it has so much of power and at the same time the power is not delivered in a very raunchy sort of a manner by the way it delivers power in a very gentlemanly fashion it's linear but it's there and the surge the build up is all the way from 2200 all the way up till 5 and a half 6000 rpm which is constantly building smooth but dollops of power holy crap and that gearbox is so fast it just snaps into the next gear snaps into the next gear and just it's an incredible build and also there is an lsd also in the car as well by the way this car tracks also huh? so it's got an lsd in the car as well where you are minimizing the wheel slip again so it's basically a kind of build where each and every part of the performance has been addressed like i've driven a ton of cars by now at this point and they there's always some place where you know people cheap out either they cheap out on the brakes they cheap out on the suspensions they cheap out on something or the other tires something or the other this is a proper complete build where everything all the parts that have been installed is complementing and working together seamlessly with each other i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much to gt tuners and akshay for letting me drive this build this is something very very special Again thank you so much for watching I'm going to see you in the next one till then ciao